Okay, now we're looking at the example problems for section 12.4, talking about the surface area of pyramids. Example one, a candle store offers a pyramid, pyramidal candle that burns for 20 hours. Pyramidal candle doesn't sound right to me either. The square base is six centimeters on a side, and the slant height of the candle is 22 centimeters. Find the lateral area of the candle. So your lateral area is one half P L for slant height. Um, I feel like, no, I guess I didn't. Here we go. Uh, let's go say square base. This is how you can kind of draw it. It doesn't have to be beautiful. As you know, I don't draw beautiful. And, blah, 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 and the slant height, so this is a pyramid. I'm going to put a point up there. Notice how I'm making my pyramid. One half, the perimeter of the base. And they tell me that the square base is six centimeters on a side. Well, six times four is 24, so my perimeter is 24. And then the slant height, they nicely just tell us that's 22. Okay, notice it's slanting. It's from the bottom, the base, goes up the triangle to the point. All right, and they say that's 22. So if I multiply that, you know, with my calculator, and I'm sure you're all grabbing your calculators and doing this, your lateral area should be 264. The label is going to be centimeters squared. All right, example number two. Find the lateral area of the hexagonal pyramid where the sides of the base are five centimeters and the lateral edge is eight centimeters. So the sides of the base are five centimeters and the lateral edge, now this is a little different, we have to be careful. Lateral edge is not the slant height. Okay, and this would be, if you want to see this in class, this would be like in the margin of your notes. You're like, Mrs. Talley, I really need to see that in a three-dimensional figure. I can show that to you. The lateral edge is where the faces meet. It's not the same as the slant height. Okay, so I'm going to have to do, I think I have something behind here. I have the triangle. I wanted to pull it out. Oh, I just had it. Oh, isn't this fun watching me, once again, me with the board, okay? Now, I'm going to redraw this. This is the 8 centimeters. This is 5 centimeters, okay? What I really need to find is the slant height, which would be right here, okay? So, what am I going to use to find my slant height? Well, 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 what should I do, what should I do? Ooh, this is going to be a right angle. This is actually going to be 2.5 centimeters. So I'm going to take Pythagorean theorem. Now be careful. This Pythagorean theorem, this is my A, or it could be my B. This could be my B, but this 8 is actually my C. So I'm going to have 2.5 squared plus the slant height, I'm going to put L for that, squared, equals 8 squared. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and figure that out. And you're grabbing your calculator just like I am. So now I have it's actually 64 minus 2.5 squared. And then we take the square root of that. All right, so my L is equal to 7.5993. Okay, pretty close to 7.6. Okay, now, now that I have that, now I'm going to go back and put everything I need in my formula. I need a perimeter. So one side is five centimeters. Move this over here a little bit. So I have five times six sides, so I actually have 30 for a perimeter. Because I have five times six sides, it's going to give me a 30. So when I take one half PL, for my lateral area, I'm going to have 1 half times 30 times this number right here, the 7.5993 and so on. So I'm going to take that times 30 times a half, and I am getting for my lateral area 113.99. So now I'm going to go 114, and I'm going to write down the zero to show that I definitely have that to the nearest tenth. And again, my area will be centimeters squared centimeters squared. All right, moving on, example three. 
surface area. So now, I'm just going to write down the formula quick. We have surface area is the lateral area plus the area of the base. Okay? Hmm, this is a square pyramid, so now I have my square has an area, not an area, I should say, uh-oh, uh-oh. Oh good, I did do perimeter here. I was about ready to take area and I'm gonna do perimeter. So eight times four is 32. I just had a moment where I thought maybe I made another mistake. I'm catching them. You guys are like looking for them and I'm catching myself before I can make it. And then I need the slant height. Here's a slant height. Do you see where that is? Let me, let me um, erase that and like highlight it again because maybe you didn't see me high, highlight that as well as you want, okay? The slant height, look closely, is right, uh, we're gonna do this in a, right there. Uh, I didn't help you. Here's my slant height, okay? And I'm gonna pull out, there's like a little triangle in here, isn't there, okay? I think, oh, I thought I had a little triangle hidden under there. I did not. All right, that's okay. Here we go, we're gonna draw out this triangle and off to the side. We're gonna put that, okay. Sorry to distract you on this little part of the lesson. Here we go, we got this. Nobody can see that, so let me try it again. Okay, now that Mrs. Tally has it together, we have, this part right here, they have an arrow saying that that is four units, or four meters. And I know this dotted line right here is this part, so I have six. So I need to figure out the other side. I'm going to take a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This time it's four squared plus six squared equals c squared. All right, 16 plus 36 is 52. So C, I'm going to take the square root of 52, I got 7.2111. All right, and that is the slant height. Okay, so now I go back to my formula. I got one half. The perimeter is 32. I got a slant height of 7.2111 plus the area of the base. The area of the base is base times height, which is weird. That's little b times little h, all right, eight times eight is 64, so I'm gonna have a 64 in here. All right, let's go ahead and do this math first. So I got 7.2111, or how many of our ones there, times 32 times a half, and I'm getting 115.3776 plus 64. And my final answer, I have 179, Point three. Actually, I'm going to have to round that to four, and because it's a surface area, it will be meter squared. Okay, and we need to keep moving on. We have one more example problem. Find the surface of the area of the, of the regular pentagonal pyramid. Okay, so we have, once again, one half. Perimeter times the slant height plus the area of the base. Oh my, look at this. I have a nice shaped figure here, and I do have underneath here my pentagon. This is the base right here. Pulling out the base, because the base is a pentagon. We're going to do some work. First of all, I want to point this out right here. That, you're like, that's not helping me. That's not helping me find the base. But it will. We will have to use that because that is actually, when it comes down to your picture, that is truly the apothem. So what I just drew here corresponds to this on the aerial view of the, the base. Okay? And that's the only way we're going to be able to figure out the perimeter. All right? Wait a minute. How am I going to figure that out? I'm going to have to use Pythagorean theorem. I have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And it just so happens, if you want to work that out, you can, but once again, it's a Pythagorean triple. This is a 5, 12, 13. 5, 12, 13, and if you don't believe me, then you need to use Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we're coming over here. This is 5. 
And you're like, well, what do I do now? Oh, yeah, remember last chapter, you still have to use that information. We have a whole bunch of triangles in this pentagon, and I'm going to kind of highlight one of those triangles is going to come out. And I'm making it really big here, and this is the five. And there are how many degrees in each one of these little triangles here? Well, you have 360 total divided by five, so this angle right here is 72 degrees, which means this angle is 36 degrees. All right? Oh, and I need to find this. And the reason I need to find this is because that corresponds to this, and that corresponds to this right here, which would give me half of what's the length of a side, which I would double it and then find that to use to find my perimeter. All right, how am I going to figure out, figure out that other side here? Ooh, what will I do? What shall I do? I have an angle. I have a side. we got to go to trig. We don't have the Pythagorean theorem. We don't have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we're opposite, adjacent, sine. Oh, no, not sine. Opposite and adjacent would be tangent. Tangent of 36 is equal to x over 5. So we're going to have 5 tangent 36 is equal to x. So you type that in your calculator. Everybody grab your calculators and you're writing this down. I know you guys are always writing this down. 3.6327. That corresponds to one half of a side. So I'm going to double that. So the entire length of the side right here okay, is 7.2654. Now, for some of you, you're going to be really smart and think, hey, I got five sides, I'm going to double it. That's actually taking this number times 10. All of us will not be able to do that. We're going to think to ourselves, hey, I have a side length of 7.2654. I'm going to take that times five sides. Okay? My perimeter is then. 36.3271, one half, perimeter, 36.3271, times the slant height, oh, they gave that to us, we're going to do math to figure it out, 13, plus the area of the base, what's the formula for the area of the base, <gasps> one half AP, <laughs> oh, the math just keeps going, one half. The apothem is five. Remember? That's all. Those are all apothems that I just highlighted there. So we're going to put five. The perimeter, oddly enough, we've already written down the perimeter, perimeter up here. Okay? And then we're going to say 36.3271. All right? And then if you just add all that up, which I hope you're listening closely, if you add all that up, I want you to turn in that total to me uh, the next time I see you in class. This total right here. You're going to calculate it. <gasps> you don't have a calculator this whole time? You didn't have a calculator? That's horrible. All right. And this would conclude the information or the examples from section 12.4.